All right, everyone. All right, everyone. Good to have everyone here again this session. So we are beginning right away. And for this section, we'll be talking about why tracking is dead and content is king. This will be taken by Alexander. And um, just briefly before Alexander comes on stage, I would like to quickly introduce Alex. So Alex is a father of two, who, has, who is also an husband, he traveled the world, he lives in the Mediterranean, he likes to play golf, he likes to drink tea, and also likes to work his new puppy. Next to that, he is also the founder and owner of atmots.io, which is a managed multi-hosting business and a marketing automation agency for small, medium businesses. Um, if you are looking for multi tutorials on YouTube, you will always find one from Alex. So Alex will be talking to us about why tracking is dead and content is king. Welcome, Alex. Hi, Olu Toby. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. It's great. So let's see if if everything works. What I set up. <laughs> so hopefully. All right. So um, Alex, you can share your screen, and then you can begin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can I can I only open? Can I only change the display here, or do I need to share the screen for the presentation? Okay, I would I would just share it here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's fine. Like this, it's it's very good. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, thanks everybody and. Uh, yeah, thanks again to the Multi community for the opportunity to speak here at Multicom Global. Um, I hope everybody can hear um, what I'm what I'm talking about. I just need to. Yes, it's fun. So, um, <clears throat> yes, I'm very excited about the Multi community in general and about the product uh, Maltic itself and to see it grow in the future. And I am working with Maltic since um, 2018 as a company. So yeah, we have a little bit time spent with the program already and we saw ups and downs already. And today I'm going to talk about um, tracking which concerns basically everybody who's in marketing and what comes next. So <clears throat> yeah, bye-bye tracking and bye-bye as we knew it and loved it. It was great and we could do what we wanted all the time basically in online marketing. And even people who shouldn't have a shot in politics could become presidents. So all thanks to tracking, profiling, and big data. So all these uh, things are going to change because thanks to these really bad happenings in our history, um, we see a steadily growing interest in privacy in general. And even some non-techies understand what privacy um, on the internet actually means. And I think it's very, very important. And I think it's a very good topic to think about marketing from a privacy perspective as well, because then our marketing can really become better and useful. So more and more people don't consent the use of cookies. I found it's only one Google search away. I found a really uh, impressing, um, study from Statista. Uh, Statista. Statista is a very big company who makes um, statistics. And they made a study about um, cookie consent and how users respond to it um, worldwide. <coughs> I think it was in 34 countries. And 
Um, this is it, it. It really blew me off my blew me off my feet because, like in Poland, there were only there were sixty four percent of people accepting the use of cookies in twenty twenty one, whereas in the U S. There were only thirty two percent of people accepting cookies, and Germany, which is the market I am most interested in. Uh, they were in the lower midfield with 44% accepting the use of cookies. So the worldwide trend goes downwards in accepting the use of cookies. And we all know and most, and most, most marketers really hate this fact and a lot of people try to overcome it somehow to avoid um, asking for consent and so on. I think that's really dangerous. But before that, um, <clears throat> yeah, not everything is bad for us in marketing. I said it before very briefly. Actually, it levels the field again, which is super interesting for small companies or for small um, um, or and, and medium businesses because now we suddenly not necessarily need to compete with people who are overruling us by spending billions in ads or millions in ads. And um, of course, you can still spend your money on ads and you should to gain traffic, but it's very difficult to reach your target group as good as you did before. Um, only by spending ads and having retargeting campaigns. It just is different nowadays. So first of all, my name is Alex Hammerschmidt. Um, as Oliver Toby said before, I'm the co-founder of Hartmut.io and I love marketing and working on automated business uh, solutions. Um, I was an architect uh, for almost 10 years in my life and probably this is the reason why I like planning and building big structures so much. Um, I was building a shopping mall <laughs> for more than six years in my life. And yeah, I'm a husband and father of two wonderful girls. We have a fresh puppy, which is three months old and very playful. It's really great. Um, yeah, I love tea, I love golf. Um, I spend way too less time on the golf course which shows me that um, I still can automate a lot more things in my own business. So yeah, let's get there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, first of all, what's the most important ingredient to sell online in general? It's trust. So it's all about trust and we earn trust by giving information and by helping overcome problems or fears or fears. And even more important, we earn trust by comforting people or by comforting someone. And the higher the comfort is, the faster someone trusts us. And trust is something we build over time. So for example, if you would use drugs, which is a really strong example, if you use drugs, if you use strong drugs for one time, you trust your dealer immediately and completely because the drug is so strong, it comforts you so much that trust is there and you want to do this again. And only because the comfort is so high. So the most important thing is to comfort your customers or to comfort your target audience as much and as high and as good as possible. So the more we interact with someone, the more trust is built in a natural way because trust is built over time and this is basic psychology. And uh, here's a company we are working with and who makes this extremely good and they are the biggest fire hose recycler um, in the German market. No, I just stopped sharing the screen, which is crazy.
Yes. <laughs> so they are the biggest firehose recycler in Germany and they sell their products to the whole world. So firehose is the stuff firefighters put their water through. <laughs> I guess everybody knows. And they build stuff like that. So like these bags and backpacks and so on and so forth. They're a really great company, really nice people to work with. And it's a small business and they produce upcycling products from original fire hose, which is super creative actually. And they are amazing. We are lucky to work with them a little more than one year now and learned so much together. So what you see here is the email funnel for the company for um 2022 so it's the second iteration of what we built with them in 21 and now we are rebuilding everything and rebuilt already a lot and we built a lot of campaigns as you can see here every line is at least one campaign and then divided with other campaigns and <clears throat> in the beginning we heavily heavily relied on tracking um to fulfill or to get our contacts through the user journey. And many decisions were made if someone visited a page or abandoned a cart or purchased a certain product. And we are going to talk about these things like that. First, we um, define the problem, then the wish which the company had. Then we define the solution. And then I'm going to show you quickly how to do this, how to analyze it, and how to repeat. <coughs> Sorry, actually, I'm, I'm ill today. So I hope I make it to the end of the talk. <laughs> OK, so the problem is nobody wants to be tracked. Really, nobody actually wants that. It's scary to understand that a company is sending you emails, fitting your interests, and raising the likelihood that you will be buying at one point. It is even more scary to understand that you see their Facebook ads only because you agree to get pixeled and so on. So, as soon as you really understand what's going on, this is super bad. <laughs> so for the normal person, that's just like, OK, they are following me. This is a trap. And yeah, on top of that, nobody reads the privacy policy. And even less people would understand the privacy policy if they would read it. So it definitely was important to raise the awareness on a public level or on a political level and forbid companies to turn on tracking per default. So this leads to relying on tracking information is very dangerous for a company, of course, because you never know. I mean, in the US, you would have only 32% um, of your visitors, which you can target. So if you rely on that, that's really, really dangerous. So if you make the maths, from 32%, only like 25% would open your emails, only 3% would buy. It's really, really bad. So you need to change it. If you had, a, if you had in, um, in former times, <laughs> or let's say last year, if you had a working, re, uh, working retargeting process with landing pages and Facebook ads, for example, now you don't. It just doesn't work anymore. Everybody we were talking with and everybody we were working with um, saw the same thing, a decline in sales, and it was um, not cost effective anymore. So um, <clears throat> you can use um, social media ads still because they're a great first touch point or great for brand awareness and so on, but you cannot use them for retargeting as good as you could in, um, in, in the good old times. <laughs> so, but if you ignore the privacy rights and the GDPR and in the US, the CCPA, it can get very, very expensive. 
there are fines up to 25 million and for a company that can be really bad. So better ask your visitors to accept your cookies. And these are only accepted by a few anymore as we saw before. And besides that, the cookie consent screen, I think everybody hates it. And yeah, nobody really wants to have that everywhere. <clears throat> so having a system in place which steadily sells more at the right time, the right place to the right person, that was the wish of Fireware Day. So they wanted to just say, okay, that's one part of our marketing mix. I mean, the email marketing automation is one part of the marketing mix. So it just needs to make sure that sales are steadily growing, especially after sales are steadily growing and um, that the average sell per client exceeds more than 1.6. So this was our starting point, 1.6 sales per client. And now we need to, we needed to raise it. So even though we don't see everything with every user on the web shop, we should still see that the things we're doing in marketing automation do make sense and are cost effective. That was the wish from the client. And yes, we can do this and we still can do this. And I think it's in the future actually really easy to accomplish that. But as marketers, we need to rethink our approach. So <clears throat> what's the solution? Um, so we needed to find something to not rely on tracking data too much and still be able to send follow-up emails on different occasions like birthdays and so on, uh, and send only useful content to our readers. So the useful content is basically the secret sauce. Um, instead of using the tracking link, which uses cookies, we now use um, UTM parameters. It's Actually, it's the, it's the technique of UTM parameters, but you can put any parameters there. I will show you in a second. The cool thing with Mautic is it redirects the links uh, in emails via the Mautic um, platform. So you will know if a contact clicked a certain link, even though the pixel in the email is not working, and even though there is no tracking link on a website, uh, there is no tracking script on a website. So what did we do? We needed to rewrite most emails and <clears throat> because most of the emails before were basically like leaflet, direct sale, direct sell emails. I mean, they were personalized and everything and it was really, it was good, but it was not like the thing, so, oh yeah, I get an email from them. I need to read it because it's so interesting. It was more the classical marketing way. So we put a lot of effort into telling stories and behind the scenes information regarding the product and the company instead of the usual, hey, you looked at product X, so why not take a look at product Y as well. So <clears throat> in short, content is king. The current situation forces us to think in terms like content for the contact instead of systems to sell to the contact. And I think that's really an important approach nowadays. And as a small business, as a small business, it's very important to do that because that's your that's the only way basically to um, get your foot into the door. So how to do it? So instead of tracking, use the, in Mautic, use the clicks link actions. So before we had like visit a page and so on. Now we use clicks link, which is amazing actually. And you can do a lot with it. You can add simple parameters to every URL and make it unique and trackable. But it's, I mean, it's its actually tracking somebody because we, re, um, um, we redirect it through Modic 
And therefore we see if a contact we know and we send an email, we see if this person clicked on the link we had in this email. But we don't see it through tracking and we don't need cookies for that, which is really nice. So even though it's not tracked through a cookie, we can see it. And this is how it's done. So you take a URL and after the slash, you put a question mark and say something. You could, you could, you can define unlimited parameters like that and still track your campaign links. You can also build a great double opt-in campaign with this if you want, and you find this on our English and German uh, YouTube channel as well. And it's super, super nice. You can even send somebody to Google with this um, parameter, and you could see in Modic, did the person click the link, which is amazing. So now we have, um, so now we switched from, hey, this is a great product, don't you want to buy it? Because you saw X or because, I don't know, most of the time we were just sending emails because a person was, was four times on a website within two days. And then we just said, okay, then let's send an email because this person is obviously interested. And now we would just send um, everybody emails with great stories about um, certain products or a specific approach on how to work with firehose and what it does actually for the environment and how good it is to reuse this material because it's so difficult to recycle anything of it and it would last for a million times somewhere in a landfill so it's very good to recycle everything so we tell stories like that and we track it with parameters, which is super easy and super nice and actually easier than having a tracking, um, um, uh, than using the tracking JavaScript on the website. Because this is actually not that easy for a lot of people who are non-techies to implement this everywhere correctly, that it's not firing twice and so on. So <clears throat> yeah, as soon as you have this journey again, so how to send them what, and how to track them, um, you should start analyzing. So analyze early and often and to understand if you should further invest into this version of your marketing or um, another kind of content. So you need to see if your contacts read your stuff. That's the only thing you need to you need to know. Basically, you don't need to know if uh, where they clicked afterwards and so on and so forth. If yes, and if they click, that's great. That's enough. So make more of this as as soon as you see in your analyze or in your analytics. Okay, that makes sense. People are clicking, and that's great uh, because then you know. Okay, people are taking it. So if they don't fix that part first. They need to click. Um, <clears throat> truly understand what your contacts do care about. And this is what we saw with a lot of clients before that is until we worked with them or until they worked with, um, with marketers or with marketing teams, um, a lot of clients just didn't really know who is my target audience and who is the person what do they like and what are they interested in actually? So you need to understand this first and truly understand what they care about. And you don't want to just fill the inbox with unwanted direct messaging style pseudo news under the hood of a newsletter or an information campaign, which doesn't bring actual information, which is only a leaflet of your product. So readers want to read. So give them something to do just that, but keep it brief. And after that, repeat it. The funny thing with user-centered marketing is you really need to stay ahead. Create more content as you did ever before and create only content which really makes sense. The typical newsletter is 100% unnecessary letters on virtual paper. It's filling inboxes and gets never read. 
So there is a reason for this. And with FireWare, we could raise the average open rate overall to almost 34% from like 25, 26 ish. And this is really good for, for, for the current moment. And we know from another client that this number can grow way above. So we have another client which has an average um, um, open rate of 70 per, or 69 point something percent, 70%. Just because it's interesting content, content for the contact. So make sure to give interest, make sure to give them a reason to click on your email. And if you do that, you don't have to worry about too much do they buy or not? Because it's just a matter of time. That's a typical brand awareness thing. So we are almost where we were before in the internet, before cookies and before tracking at the moment. So tracking is going to be illegal, I'm sure, in a very short time. Um, and I hope we learned a little bit from the things which happened. Um, if we give and only give, we have the best brand awareness campaign we can ever have. So brand awareness leads to sales, always. It's very simple. This is very basic marketing maths. Also, the only actual metric we need are the overall sales, because it was very difficult to, to tell okay, this sale came because of this email. It's actually very difficult to do so. With Fireware, we have 13 different um, um, parts in our marketing mix. And email marketing is only one, or like the email funnels are only one small bit of the retargeting, remarketing thing, after sales thing. So it's very difficult to, to, to actually tell this user bought because of this email. It's actually not possible. <laughs> you would lie to yourself if you would say so. So all the other things are counting towards the overall sales. So when they are growing, it's great. And if you don't have peaks in sales, every time you send out a newsletter, Think about the content of your newsletter. You probably need to improve. Yes, <laughs> that's it. Um, I hope you can take out one or two things of that. And I think I didn't share my screen. That's really bad. I did share my screen. That's good. OK. I hope it worked. I hope everybody could see what I saw. <laughs> so, are there All right, thank you so much, Alex. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. All right, thank you so much for that. So that was really, oh, well, I wanted to say quick, but I can see we use already 30 minutes. So not really quick, but that was an interesting topic and um, a great submission there. Okay, so um, quickly, let's go on to ask questions. So in case you have any questions you would like to ask, please feel free to drop them in the question and answer chat box, and then we can be yeah. able to talk about them, okay? So um, there's a question coming from Robin. Robin is asking, would Google Analytics be dead when tracking is no longer allowed? Yes, no, I, I no, don't think, I, I, think, don't think I, I think I think there are a lot of, there is a lot of effort to make tracking allowed in some way. Um, cookies are the, the current version of how you would track something and people will come up with different new versions on how to track something and how to analyze what's going on on your web page and so on and so forth. Even the understanding of um, privacy um, counts towards um, the understanding of the customer to give you the right to count maybe 
who was on your website, and so on and so forth. Um, but I think that a lot of things we did so far will not work anymore. Like even Google retargeting is going to become more and more difficult. Um, yeah, at the moment it still works because so many people have Google Analytics still on the website and um, um, ads, uh, um, like Google com uh, Google ads, um, um, what is it called? The, yes, the conversion optimizer from Google ads, they are still running it on their website and they just don't ask for consent. So that's the only reason why it still works. If people would really ask, it wouldn't work anymore. And um, the, the problem is going to be that there will be so many more people who need, who are going to be fined and who are going to pay a lot. So it's going to change. I know we have some clients who needed to pay, not 25 millions, <laughs> but who needed to pay and who will never not ask for consent anymore. So. I think this is going to, to, to change a lot in the future. Yeah. All right. OK, so let me quickly ask you uh, another question. Um, do you think the GDPR and privacy rule will change again to give businesses some possibility back? Uh, yes. I think, um, I think it will change a lot, um, but I only think it's going to be more difficult. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, I think that the, the the only way for us for for smaller marketing um, companies or for small um, 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 for SMBs is to use user centered content because it's 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 so easy to do that actually with TikTok and YouTube and everything it's so easy to get your piece of the cake only if you give out something what users what want so yeah i don't think it gets easier i think it gets more difficult in the future all right okay so one more question for you from my hand do you think multi can tackle these problems and give matic marketers the tools they need to overcome this do you think multi can uh, yes to yes I think Mautic is going to, to do it. And so I think the Mautic community, we have it in our hands actually to come up with tools which are um, like which, 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 how is it called? I think we can build a tool which gives us the insight um, of what we what we are doing and what happens on our websites and on our landing pages and in our marketing campaigns, um, we can build the tools which are GDPR compliant or CCPA compliant, and which um, are not um, like abusing the policy or the privacy policy. And I think we can build it, but it depends on, on us as a community. So it's very important that we think this through. It's very important to, to create tools, new tools on how to use Modic or how to market in general. Because if we do this, if the Modic community is doing this, then everybody will just come to Modic because Modic is such a great tool. So I think it's the perfect thing for us for the future actually when when people are not allowed to use google analytics or other other systems anymore so because then they need to have their own server which they where they own their data and so on and so forth so i think for Mautic, for the community that's actually very good news but we need to build it now and we need to get away from the classical tracking system to something more intelligent um for the future all right. Thank you so much, Alex. So it's really been a uh, wonderful session. So once this um, once this conference is over in a few weeks or a few days from now, the session will be uploaded on YouTube and um, a lot of other people can also come back, watch it again, try to pick up one or two things that you can also be able to learn. All right. So we come to the end of this session today. In case you still want to interact with Alex, feel free to send him a message on Emmett. 
he would love to assist we already shared his email you might also contact him through his emails and then also um alex you might also want to join the table on um on the lounge room three maybe there might be a couple of people that might still want to come over to network and chat with you all right thank you so much everybody so we have just one more session for room three today and before we call it multicon 2022 all right so in about 20 minutes we start the next session so i'll be looking forward to see every person and other people join us then do have a great day and do have a wonderful time going around this conference bye for now thank you bye <laughs>